Welcome to the Morally End. My name is Mark Machado. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm joined by the doyen of Sri Lanka cricket, Nick Brooks, and Sri Lanka's number one journalist, not just sports journalist, she covers all of all matters. Um, Estelle Vazu Devon. I am in Dublin, Nick is in London, and Estelle is in Colombo. I'm here because the Sri Lanka women's team are here taking on Ireland. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um but before we get started, before we get into it, I need to tell you about two things. Firstly, if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, you've got to hit that subscribe and that follow button. Um, we love all your support. Thank you for watching. Thanks for spreading the word. We, this show is growing, which is brilliant, but you need to subscribe. Please subscribe. It helps us get viewers, get uh, get more people engaged, get more people um, involved in it. Um, and on top of all that, secondly... The test series is starting against England in about 10 days' time. We've got, we're hoping to sort an event out in Manchester, but we've teamed up with the Three Falcons pub in St. John's Wood, which is only minutes away from Lords, and we'll be doing ev- uh, meetups every day after every day of play. Of Sorry, I'll start that again. We'll be doing meetups at the close of every day's play at the Three Falcons. If you haven't been there before, it's great food. It's butter chicken. It's biryani. Sorry, there's no Sri Lankan food on the menu yet. Uh, they are trying to work to get some lime beers. We're going to be there. We've got loads of special guests coming down as well. And I'm trying to find someone with a papare, with as much papare instruments as, as we can muster to try and, you know, get the Sri Lankan vibes going afterwards. It's just a meetup there. It might be a glorious day of cricket for us as Sri Lanka fans. It might be a terrible day of cricket for us. We don't know what's going to happen. Whatever happens, we'll be there. We'll be celebrating or drowning our sorrows with a beer. You can chat to Nick. You can chat to myself. Estelle's not going to be there, sadly. Um, and we've got loads of other people coming down. So please stick that in your diary. I'll put the the... More details for it in the description as well. We'd love to see you there. And, uh, you know, whoever you're with, maybe you don't even have a ticket for the test. Maybe you just want to come down and have a chat with us. Do it. Um, it's only, I think the closest tube station is actually Edgware Road to the, to the pub. Um, but, yeah, we'd love to see you. Right, Estelle, let's get into it. The first T20 between Sri Lanka and Ireland was yesterday. Um, Sri Lanka won at quite a canter, didn't they? Yeah, it was, I mean... I didn't expect it to be that easy because when I saw Ireland posting 145, I thought it would be a bit of a challenge. Because Sri Lanka have, I mean, it's no secret. They've depended on Antapattu to give them that good start. But, I mean, they did it quite easily in the end. Harshita Samaravikrama continues, I think, to go from strength to strength. She's, every time you see her, you think, Oh, she hasn't, surely she hasn't played better than this. And she keeps bettering that every time she goes out for Sri Lanka. So it's really promising signs. She opened the batting with Vishmi Gunaratnam, who also had a, had a good day out. Um, timed the ball really well. Played to her strengths. I think that is the most important thing. And it was a really great watch, I think, for Sri Lankans. There was a lot of uh, Sri Lankan support at the venue as well, which is great to see. I think it's finally catching on and it's... You know, to see see a crowd turnout for the women in Ireland was huge. Yeah, Nick, they, I know the girls came over to England last year and, and played a few, what, three T20s and three ODIs. But this squad without Charmory, playing in, in unfamiliar conditions, were you slightly worried about what, what could have happened? Yeah, I think coming into this series, everyone felt that it was a potential banana skin, a series that Sri Lanka are expected to win, but obviously one without Chamari, who they have relied on, who's away at the 100. But I think, look, over the past few months, this team is going from strength to strength, right? And I think we're seeing new stars emerging. And I think we're seeing a team that is increasingly less and less reliant on Chamari Atapattu for this to be a one-woman show. And... You know, as Stella said, um, Harshita played another great innings yesterday following on from a really good knock in the Asia Cup final. Uh, Vishmi is really breaking out. Uh, Kavisha Dilhari is growing into a star. I think this batting lineup is starting to look deeper and uh, more reliable, certainly, than it has done. And it feels to me like the World Cup is coming at a really good time for this group of girls. Yeah, Estelle, we never really got to discuss the fact that Charmy wasn't going to be part of the T20 games. 
Um, it looks to me, though, that the kind of trajectory over the last kind of couple of years for the women's team is that they've got Elvis and Charmory. And while Elvis has been outperforming, in the back, they've been rehearsing the Beatles. And how they just, <laughs> they're unleashing them, right? It's incredible. Yeah, and we've been, we've been talking about it for a while, right? Yes, Atapato's contributions have been massive towards Sri Lanka's wins. But you're slowly seeing other players beginning to stand up and being able to carry the team forward. I think the perfect example is obviously the most recent one, right? The one in the Asia Cup final. I keep saying like 72 or 48. No one is believing that Sri Lanka chases that without Atapattu, right? And with such ease, they did it with like an over to spare. Um, and, and India never really got a sniff into it uh, even after Atapattu was dismissed. So I think you're right that, that that background is that the backup players are being formed. Um, it's a lot to do with the mental side of things. I know we were talking about something similar to do with the men's players just before we got um, online on our WhatsApp thread. But I do think the mental aspect of it is huge because like we've discussed over the last couple of episodes, right? This is this is basically, apart from two or three changes, the same squad we had four years ago, right? There have only been a couple of new entries. Other than that, it's very similar. So for them to be performing like this, I think it's massive and, you know, goes to show the value of having consistent games which they didn't have during covid nearly two years right since then they've had three four five series during one year and that's never happened before and you're seeing the the fruits of that come out in not not just Atapat to unlocking a different level completely but the other girls as well just to like look at yesterday's game um i loved how like you know when uh, Hashita and Vishmi going, were going really well. Once Vishmi was dismissed, they sent Kavisha up the order, right? And that was with a clear intention of finishing the game quickly. So they are being that that aggressive nature has kind of seeped into the team as a whole, I think. Yeah, Nick, we've come on this show uh, every time the women's team play. And we talk about basically how they've done it. We kind of lay out the bl- bl- blueprint to it, which is select a group of girls in in many cricketing nations case like it is in Sri Lanka it's quite obvious who who the kind of top kind of 15 20 players are in the women's game where it might not be so clear in, in for, for men's teams and essentially what Sri Lanka have done is they've got them a load of fixtures they've kind of settled the coach and staff down as well in terms of it's it's the consistent group of coaches are going out with them on these tours and they've started to, to pay them quite decently as well. Is there a fear, though, that some of the other nations might kind of replicate that and be able to catch up with us? Do you think we should be worried about about that? I mean, I think that you have to look at the way the women's grown, uh, women's game has grown over the past uh, two, three years and expect that the standard of some of the smaller nations, those teams outside of the big three of Australia, India, and uh, who haven't I said England, um, that uh, that some of those other sides are going to be improving rapidly, right? But I think that Sri Lanka are ahead of the curve. And I mean, actually now, you looked at the way that they dealt with West Indies during that last home series. You looked the way they went away to South Africa and played. And you're wondering if Sri Lanka are kind of getting into that fourth seed territory, uh, which is a long way from where we saw them at the uh you know at the last world cup i think they were we would probably have said that they were more like seventh or eighth uh so it's great to see the progress that has been made especially over the last 18 months and something that i noticed or i thought about this morning was that this world cup for quite a lot of the members of this squad has got quite a last dance feel right you know a lot of these ladies are now into their mid 30s quite a few of them are over 35 Chambery's talked about retirement and so i wonder if quite a few of these girls are approaching uh bangladesh as you know last chance saloon this is our last chance to go out at a major tournament and make it count and i wonder if there's a feeling from quite a lot of them that this is kind of shaping up to be a perfect storm you know that they're peaking at the right time that they're playing in conditions which they're comfortable with and favorable 
that are favourable to them and that they might not get another shot at this. And I wonder if that feeling just adds another little spark and another little bit of impetus um, for them to go out and really achieve something historic and memorable at this tournament. Estelle, when the Asia Cup was on, you got to kind of be in and around the squad a little bit. Did you hear them talk about the World Cup? Have you heard, you know, did you hear the players discuss it in any way? Do you get the feeling, you know, what Nick's talking about, the, this kind of anticipation amongst the players is, is growing? I think, actually, the thing with this team is, and I think Atapattu said it many, many times, is that they're not looking too far ahead, which is a great attitude, I think, to have, because if you look at not too long, 2022, you had... The men win the Asia Cup and go immediately into a World Cup. Their expectations were sky high, right? And they had quite a terrible tournament if you look at it, right? Um, the women, I, they've been reiterating, especially like the coach and the captain, saying that they're taking it one game at a time. They want to look at the next game and how they want to play the next game, which I think is the right way to go about it because they don't want to take or take too much pressure onto them because, you know, I know we've had a really brilliant couple of years, but, you know, there's a very real possibility that Sri Lanka goes into the World Cup and, you know, loses four out of five or loses five out of five, right? Because it's only a 10-team tournament and you're playing five other teams who are, on their day, quite good, right? So even though they've beaten these teams in the last two years, they've beaten quite a few of them, they will know that you know, on the day, just like they did to India, any one of those teams is is capable of turning things over. So I think I, I really like that attitude that they have, that they're focusing on the next game. Maybe at the back of their minds, they do have what, what Nick described as that kind of feeling that this is their last opportunity. Many of them I don't see playing beyond the 2025 World Cup. You've got a lot of 32 plus, 33 plus players who probably won't last beyond the ODI World Cup next year. So they probably have that at the back of their minds. But I again, I, I really hope they are, as they say, they are focusing on the next game or the next tour, what's coming right up next. Because it's just too much anticipation, right? And you have to think about, like when you think about the women, they've never had that kind of pressure. You think about the men, they play with that pressure every tournament, right? Even if they've been shit for two years when they go into a World Cup, we think, oh no, like on paper, they, they look really competitive. They should probably get into the semis. That's how we think, right? Um, so they've never had that kind of pressure on them. They've always been kind of the, a team that, you know, people are expecting to finish 6th, 7th, 8th, right? But this time, teams are going to be very, especially like in, in their group, they've got India and Australia. I'm sure they've, you know, got the tapes out. India has played them recently. Australia hasn't played them in this cycle. I'm sure they've got, you know, some analysis done and they're ready for them. So I like the fact that they've kind of made it a point to say that they're looking at only the next step. They're not looking too far ahead of themselves. Estelle, I'm really buzzing to go to the second T20 tomorrow. Um, if you were part of the Cricket Island think tank getting ready for that um, for that fixture considering how many runs they scored in the first match and, and was still quite blown away, what would you be telling the Irish girls if you want to try and beat this Sri Lanka side? Where are our weaknesses? There is one thing somebody also pointed out on Twitter earlier today. is that the bowling is looking less and less threatening in conditions that are batting friendly. And I think that is something we have to kind of look at, right? Because you've got your wicket-taking bowlers, but as we mentioned prior to the Asia Cup, there is that concern about experience because they're leaving out, you know, Karanavira and Oshri Ranasingh, who have been, you know, they are kind of stalwarts for the last, I don't know how many years, right? Particularly Ranavira, who, who was excellent at the last World Cup as well. So there is a bit of a concern there. I know, you know, we say it's a concern and then when they do well, it's not a concern. But if you look at even the Asia Cup, there was a bit of, you know, there were some moments where you felt like other other teams going to get away with things because the conditions were batting friendly and Sri Lanka don't have too many um, wicket-taking options. I mean, Kavisha and Inoshi are the two 
I would say are real wicket taking options. The others are more containment style. So how they are used is going to be really important. And um, I don't want to like you know be too critical also because if you look at the Asia Cup, they managed to keep teams like India down despite them having like good starts. They managed to keep them down to a manageable totals whenever they play. Right. So I'm sure there are plans in place by the management. Um, but if if I was Ireland, that would be, you know, one area that I would be thinking of. The other one is obviously that Sri Lanka prefer to chase. So if they're, if they're able to, you know, win the toss and put Sri Lanka in, they should be able to, you know, apply some pressure, particularly with the point I discussed before, where they didn't find it too difficult to score runs off the bowlers in the first game. Um, I'm actually quite looking forward to Sri Lanka batting first. I don't know if you are, Nick, because I just think that we might end up putting on quite a big total at some point if we get the chance to to go first. Yeah, and I think you'd rather see it, um, you know, Sri Lanka get good experience doing it now than for us to chase in all the games here and then get lose the toss against Australia in that first game in the World Cup and get put into bat, having not had a recent crack at it. And um, yeah, you're right. I think this is a great chance to bat first and put up a big total. I saw Estelle mentioning on Twitter that we're still waiting for our first um, non-Chamari century and uh, getting a little closer, aren't we? Um, I know that Harshita has... Um, been unbeaten in our last two innings and scored about 150 between them so maybe that's like half a hundred I don't know uh but yeah I think it would be a good time to um bat first if that happens tomorrow and I'd be excited to see it you know like this top order as I say is going from strength to strength and you know seeing the growth that we've seen especially from Vishmi and Kavisha for me is really really exciting and so seeing those girls yeah get a full 20 overs to have a crack at things would be nice yeah, so so I think in the WhatsApp group I mentioned that it's basically it's a it's kind of in T twenty cricket, unless we had an absolute disaster with our bowling, it's kind of impossible for any of our stronger players if we bat second to get a century, right? Because they the opposition the yeah, the other team would ha- would have to make kind of at least north of about one eighty and it would then and then really it's only the two openers that have got that shot to do it, right? Um if if that does happen, because just because the, the runs are so, the chase isn't isn't big enough, right? Which is why you know Harshley is probably absolutely gutted that she doesn't that yes they particularly should get to bat first, right? But I do think you know coming to Ireland in their first game, looking at what the ball was doing, as we all learned from the men's World Cup in New York, uh, bowling first can sometimes be a good thing in in unfamiliar conditions. But maybe tomorrow or, you know, Tuesday, whatever day, I don't know what day you're listening or watching this. So but Tuesday the 13th of August might be the day to to try and have a bat first with it. So would you like to see any kind of changes in the 11 as well? And kind of, you know, they can't lose the T20 series now. So um, this is only two games. So do you think they might be tempted to make a few changes to the 11? Um, just looking at the 11 they played yesterday, right? It's interesting. They only played six batting options. So a long tail and, you know, genuine bowling options. I'd be interested to see if they want to try Yama Kanchara, who can have a bit of a hit at the, in the middle order, right? And I also think it's important to have players like that kind of, you know, a match ready because you don't know what's going to happen at a World Cup. Like, if we've learned anything from the men's side of things, you can have injuries, right? And Sri Lanka pretty much have like a set 11. So if one of them kind of misses out or has an injury, then you're in a bit of a, a bit, bit of a fix. So I think it would be good to have someone like Amma Kanchana in. She's a medium pacer, can, can strike the ball well. So maybe give her an opportunity. But I wouldn't mind keeping Sachini Nisansala in the side as well. So maybe they leave out one of the other quicks. Um, give them a bit of bit of a rest because the ODI series is going to be important, right? Because they they have to win the three games to ensure that they get get into the World Cup automatically. So maybe give someone like Udeshika a rest um, in the second game and get Ama in. But I mean, either way, whatever they think, I think it's not going to make a huge difference. I just like to see someone like Ama Kanchana getting a game or two here and there because. 
like I said, World Cup's coming and you don't know what's going to happen there. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, World Cup's coming. You also you don't want to take people all around the world to not give them a, a game if, if you can, right? Maybe, maybe that's my, you know, maybe that's my kind of amateur amateur ethos coming true. I don't know. Um, uh, Nick, what are you... Um, are you anticipating anything extra for, from the team in the in this second T20? Is there anything else you think they might be able to improve on? No, I'm just hoping to see more of the same, Marky. And I mean, I know we're saying we don't want to look too far ahead, but I think that if they can win tomorrow and then hopefully pull off that clean sweep in the ODI, which secures their spot for next year, it just sets them up great, right? They By that stage, they're on like a... I don't know, 15 match white ball winning streak or something like it feels like. Um, and so, yeah, just keep on winning. Keep on, um, you know, seeing people standing up and um, putting up performances that make us take note. And just, yeah, feeling like we're in really, really good shape for um, Bangladesh, hopefully in Bangladesh in three and a bit weeks time. Um, Estelle, just one last question before you wrap up the chat. The Asia Cup win was what ten days ago, two weeks ago. I can't remember exactly. It feels feels like it's quite recent. Um, this series has come, you know, quite soon afterwards. What is the kind of momentum like in Sri Lanka? We saw the huge crowds turn out for the girls in Dublin. I say huge crowds; they're obviously not huge, but I mean Dublin isn't a place that has a massive Sri Lankan community, and also isn't a big cricket place as well. The fact that there's even what thirty or forty Sri Lanka fans there at flags, I think, is quite a bit an extraordinary thing, right? Um, what What's the momentum like for the women's team right now in, in, in Sri Lanka? Yeah, you know what? Like, I can only tell you about what I see online and I've seen a lot more content about the women. Everybody loves a winner, right? And they've been winning consistently and people are finally getting on board with this team. It's good to see because, I mean, there was a time where you'd have to wait until the next morning to see a graphic of the team um, or, or the result of, of the game. In Sri Lanka, the, the, the games are being shown on TV um, and also on Facebook and on mobile apps. So, you know, it's, it's available to people for, to watch and that is because there is a need for it, right? There is, uh, uh, people want to watch it. So, it's good to see. I hope that the same kind of support remains when things aren't really going as well because we've followed the women's team for years now and, you know, they've had patches where they haven't done well and there are patches when you think like only Atapattu is a good player or whatever. Um, I hope the support remains because it is something that is kind of revolutionary. I, I mentioned it in a couple of um, episodes earlier as well about how, you know, People who don't watch cricket, uh, haven't watched cricket for the last 10 years, are now tuning in because they want to see the women play, right? A uh, lot of women um, tuning in to see. So that's that's kind of the revolution they've created with, with that Asia Cup win. So I'd like to see that continuing. Obviously, like I said, you know, everybody loves the winner. So as long as they're winning, there's going to be support. I hope that that's going to continue uh, beyond that. And there's constant support for the girls. Particularly as things, you know, Atapattu is going to leave someday and then, you know, someone else going is going to have to take over that mantle. So I hope that support remains. Amazing. Guys, let's leave it there for today. Uh, we're going to be back later in the week. We're going to start our... Uh, we'll, we'll obviously keep on top of what's been going on with this series. We'll start to look at kind of some test match stuff as well. As I mentioned at the top of the show, please subscribe, hit that follow button, hit the subscribe button, tell all your friends, hit the likes, hit the comments, share, 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 share. And also, if you're coming to the test, if you're in London, you want to get involved with these meetups during the Lord's Test, we'll be at the Three Falcons pub soon after the close of play. I think I might have to send my dad as, a, as an emissary uh, as soon as the, you know, in the last, when we've got a couple of overs left to go to kind of hold the fort, and then me and Nick will have to sort everything out in the media centre or whatever. By that, I mean eat all the food. The food in the media centre in, in Lords is unbelievable. Um, and then we'll come down again. I will eat there again because the chicken, uh, butter chicken and the biryani in this pub is great as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to all the eating. 
Uh, thanks for coming on board. We'll see you all again shortly. Bye.